Yo, what's up guys? It's Noah here, uh, and in today's video, we're going to be breaking down the NBA slate on DraftKings and Yahoo for Friday, uh, April the 15th. Once again, got a two-game slate for Friday. We got the basically the conclusion of the play-in tournament. Uh, we got the Hawks and the Cavs uh, playing for the 8th seed. This is basically win or go home. If you win, you're the 8th seed. You, you, know, you move into the playoffs, and if you lose, your season's over with. So this is definitely... You know, these are going to be some big time games. You're going to see tight rotations, you know, kind of as we've been seeing over the last few games. And then we got the Pelicans and the Clippers, uh, you know, as the late night game. Should be a lot of fun, though. Excited for this two game slate. Excited to watch these games. You know, as always, guys, we're going to go uh, game by game, talk through each team, kind of break down this slate, give my early thoughts, what I do like taking a first look at this slate on Thursday. I'm recording this video a little earlier than normal. I'm recording it around east, uh, 2 Eastern time on Thursday, um, early afternoon. Just figured since the, since the salaries are out, figured I'd go ahead and, you know, make the video. So, Let's talk through things. Just before we do, hit the like button down below, guys. Always appreciate the likes. Hit that subscribe button as well if you are new here. Also, check out the sponsor of the video, uh, Price Picks. For those of you that are new and have not signed up for Price Picks yet, get over there, sign up, use code NOAH. When you do, Price Picks will match your first deposit up to $100. And a uh, very cool promo Price Picks is running. You know, the other day, I think it was like two days ago, uh, their site was having some issues. I think they were, you know, they had slight site-wide uh, outage and they tr you know they tried to make it up for everyone um, obviously you know stuff like that happens when you're running a, a website you, you know when you have a lot of people on your site a lot of traffic there's going to be times when the site goes down and you know the other day prospects had some issues they're making it up to everyone they're giving out a free pick basically uh, they moved Joel Embiid's uh, points prop down to 0 0.5 so basically if Embiid scores one point you win that pick um, you have to find another pick that you like to, to pair with that one but you can uh, basically, pr basically, Prize Picks is giving you a free pick to, to pair with something else that you like. And as always, you know, I'll share some of my favorite plays uh, for this Friday slate. So if you want to put the Embiid free free square with my plays, you could do that. Um, but yeah, sign up for Prize Picks. Use code NOAH. Get you know, take advantage of this promo that Prize Picks is running. Uh, you know, Embiid over 0 0.5 points. Obviously, that's something you know you're gonna take. Find another pick you like to pair with that. You could potentially triple up your money. You're basically getting three to one odds uh, as long as you hit one pa uh, one pick. So. Find a player prop that you like. If you hit it, you get three to one odds. Um, and obviously, you would pair that with the MB promo. So definitely check out Prospects, guys. Use code NOLA when you do. And I will have my uh, my Prospects video will probably be posted later tonight um, after this video goes up. Maybe a couple hours. Um, we'll have I'll have to wait, and, you know, till we get all the props up for for these games. But I'll, I'll definitely have my Prospects video up, you know, posted sometime late Thursday night. But let's talk through this two gamer. Let's start off with the uh, Atlanta Cleveland game and start off on the Atlanta side. So like I said, this is basically win or go home. So I expect. Very tight rotations here. As long as these games stay close, um, I expect you know a lot of the main guys to play heavy, heavy minutes. Trey Young's minutes were not super high in their game on Wednesday against Charlotte, but that was just because that game was pretty in hand for them. They won by almost 30. Trey only played 34 minutes. He probably would have played around 40 minutes had the game stayed close. I think if today's game's close against Cleveland, which it should be, we're going to get 38, 40 minutes from Trey on a two-game slate at only 9,700. Like, Trey stands out as the, my top stud option. Um, you could obviously go to Paul George, and we'll talk about Paul George later. He looks like a pretty good pay-up option as well. But I really like Trey on this slate. I think he's my favorite stud to pay up for. 9,700 on DK, a little bit more expensive on Yahoo at $46. Uh, but I do like Trey quite a bit over there as well. I mean, we just know Trey's role is going to be so good. He's just going to get so much usage. He's going to play a ton of minutes. He had a pretty bad shooting game against Charlotte on Wednesday night and still scored almost 50 drafting points while shooting, you know, 8 for 24 from the field. He's going to take 20, 25 shots. He's going to, you know, have a massive facilitating role, probably going to get double-digit assists as well. 9,700 is definitely too cheap for Trey, so I do like him quite a bit today. I think Clint Capella is a pretty good option as well. We'll have to pay attention to news on John Collins. We don't have any update yet on John Collins. He didn't play in Wednesday's game. He's been out for a while. I think he probably is just is going to remain out for this game. Um, I think it's unlikely he plays today, and if he's still out, I feel really good about Clint Capella's minutes. Um, Capella did play 29 minutes in their game against Charlotte. He did see his minutes bump up a little bit because uh, a Kung Wu did get in, uh, into some early foul trouble, which allowed Capella to play you know a little bit more mi minutes than he would have. I think he was on pace to play like 34, 35 minutes had the game stayed close. I think if it stays close today, going up against you know Evan Mobley and Kevin Love, they're probably going to need some size out there. So I think we do get. 32, 33 minutes from Clint Capella. You know, he was really good in that matchup against Charlotte. I don't think this is as good of a spot against Cleveland, but Capella does have a lot of upside. He can score. He can rebound. He's obviously a guy that can block shots as well. You know, it was good to see him have a big game against Charlotte. I think he can keep that going here um, against Cleveland. So I definitely like Capella today. Um, I think he's a very solid option. Bogdan was a little bit of a disappointment last night. He was kind of chalky. Um, only put up 20 DK points in 25 minutes. 
His role has been really good off the bench, though, playing with that second unit, um, gets a lot of usage with the second unit, and he's another one of these guys that you know can contribute in all categories. He can score, he can rebound, he can get assists. At 5,700, like I think Bogdan's a fine play in the mid-range. I would think he probably plays a few more minutes than he did last game, probably 28 to 30 here. So don't mind Bogdan at 5,700. And then if we're lo kind of looking for some value, there's some value that I like on Atlanta. You got DeAndre Hunter at 5,100, who I did like as a value play last late. He had a terrible first half. I think he had like, I want to say five DraftKings points at halftime. Like he was just not doing anything. And then he went nuts in the third quarter, um, finished with 34 DK points, had 22.7 rebounds, two assists. He played 30 minutes, and obviously, you know, he also saw his minutes cut because of the because of the blowout. He probably would have played like 35, 36 minutes had the game stayed close. And obviously, with this being a must-win game, I think we're going to get big minutes from Hunter, big minutes from Trey, pr pretty big minutes from Kevin Herter, who we'll talk about. I think Capella's going to play around 30 minutes. So I expect big minutes from DeAndre Hunter once again. I know the price tag came up a little bit, but on a two-game slate, obviously, it's tough to find value on these playoff slates. I think DeAndre Hunter looks like a pretty decent value play once again. Um, he's really cheap on Yahoo, so I definitely like him over there at $14. I think he looks like, you know, one of the better small forward options uh, on Yahoo. And then Kevin Herdy, you have at 4900 who's just been been solid as of late. You know, look over his last five games, at least 25 DK points in four out of his last five. Had another good game last game against uh, Charlotte. Played 30 minutes. And again, probably would have played more had the game stayed close. Still had 28 DraftKings points, though, in those 30 minutes. I mean, Kevin Herter's going to play, like, 33, 34 minutes here. If it's a close game, he's fairly cheap at 4,900. You know, he's not a guy that offers like a massive, massive ceiling, but on a two-game slate with minimal value, if I can get 28, 30 DraftKings points from Kevin Herter at 4,900, that's probably going to be pretty good, you know, just because there's not going to be a lot of cheap guys that do really well. Um, so I really like Kevin Herter as another value option from Atlanta. 4,900 on DK, pretty cheap over there. Pretty cheap on Yahoo as well, $16. I think you can definitely play Kevin Herter on Yahoo um, as well. And then that's probably it from Atlanta. I don't see it too much else I like. Do want to mention that Gallo, I think, is a fine option. He played 30 minutes last game. I would think he plays around that again here, maybe a few more minutes. At 4,700, like, I'm fine going to Gallo. I think Atlanta does look like one of the more appealing teams to target on the slate. Really, their entire starting lineup, Trey, Kevin Herter, Hunter, Capella, um, Gallo, I think all five of those guys are viable. I think Bogdan off the bench is viable. And that's probably it from Atlanta. I don't think I'm playing anyone else on this team, but I could definitely see playing two, three, maybe four Hawks on this slate. Um, they're, just because they're the team that kind of presents like the most value, I would say, outside of Trey and outside of Capella, you're getting some fairly cheap options that do have you know enough upside to to pay off their price tag. So really like this Atlanta team. Um, a lot that stands out here. Now on the other side with Cleveland, you got Darius Garland at 8,500, who definitely stands out as a solid you know play. I mean, his price tag has come way down. He was 9,600 last slate against uh against Brooklyn in that game played 39 minutes he kind of kind of didn't play as much as I thought he would in the first half he only played like 16 first half minutes but I'm pretty sure he played the entire second half so I think we're going to get huge minutes from Darius Garland the fact that he played the entire second half last game makes me think he's you know he should be fine to play big big minutes here if the game stays close at 8500 like again that's too cheap for Garland you know this is a guy that we've seen priced a lot around the 10k range this season you know the upper nines now the price has come way down. I know he's had some you know, mediocre games lately, but he's also just going to have a massive role, very similar to Trey Young. He's just going to have the ball in his hands so much. He's a guy that can score, can facilitate. He's going to play huge, huge minutes. I like the matchup against Atlanta. I think you know Darius Garland looks like a fine option at 8,500. If I can find the salary to get up to Trey, I feel a little bit better about Trey, uh, but I definitely think Garland's viable. Um, we'll have to monitor the status on Jared Allen. No updates been provided yet for him. Like I said, I'm recording this video on Thursday early afternoon. Um, I don't know when we're going to get an update on uh, or on Jared Allen. I would think he probably just sits out again. Um, he's been out for a while. He's been out for like over a month now. Really, <clears throat> really haven't seen like any any report that he's you know anywhere close to playing. I think he might be back. Like I think if uh, if Cleveland advances, if they win this game and you know they get the eight seed and then they they would play again in the next round. Maybe Jared Allen would play in the next round of the playoffs if they advance. But for this game on Friday, I don't think he's going to be quite ready. So with Jared Allen most likely still out, I mean, we should see a big role for Evan Mobley. I know Evan Mobley was kind of disappointing in that game against Brooklyn. He played 35 minutes, had 33 DraftKings points. I liked Mobley a lot that slate when he was 7,300. Now the price tag has come down to 6,800. I think Mobley looks like a really solid play once again. I mean, he should play huge minutes here. Um, he's been really good in this matchup this season through three games against Atlanta. He's averaged 45 DraftKings points per game against them. Um, not sure why that is. Like, going up against Capella, I don't think that would be a great spot. But a lot of, you know, I think a lot of their games against Atlanta this season, um, Jared Allen's been healthy. So maybe 
you know, Evan Mobley's been able to take advantage of like John Collins defense and Gallo defense. But either way, at 6,800, I think that is too cheap for Evan Mobley. Power forward and center eligible on DraftKings. He stands out as a strong mid-range play. He's definitely my favorite power forward option on Yahoo at $27. His role is just going to be really good. He's going to play huge minutes. Um, getting all of his minutes at center is going to be, you know, more, he's going to be more productive in those minutes. You know, his rebounds will take a spike as well. Um, I just like the, I like the price tag. I think he's a good option. I think the minutes are going to be huge for him. So feel really good about him and Darius Garland. I think both are solid plays. Karis LeVert, I'm not as high on. He still did play a lot of minutes. He actually, I'm pretty sure he played the most minutes on the team in their game against Brooklyn on a, on Tuesday, I believe that was. Look, Karis LeVert probably plays big minutes again, but I think 6,500 is probably an appropriate price tag for him. Um, not a guy that I'm super high on, but on a two-game slate, he's obviously playable. Kevin Love had a really good game off the bench last game, and we kind of talked about, like, Kevin Love's one of these guys that you never know how many minutes he's going to play. His minutes have kind of been all over the place this season. But when he's out there, he's going to be productive. He can score. He can shoot threes. He can rebound really well. He had a double-double in those 29 minutes, 14 and 13, um, 36 DraftKings points. 5,900, like I'm fine going to Kevin Love today. I think he's a guy that does offer some upside. There's always some risk with him just because you never know how you know, never know how many minutes he's actually going to play. But if he continues to get like 28 to 30, he played 29 last game. If he gets around that amount today, very likely that he exceeds value at 5,900 because of how good of a you know point-per-minute player he is. So I'm kind of interested in Kevin Love. I think Laurie Markkinen might be a safer play just because his minutes are you know way more secure. He probably plays 30-plus minutes here if the game's close. He did get into foul trouble last game, which definitely limited him a little bit. Only played 29 minutes. He would have played more had he not been in foul trouble. Foul trouble has been kind of an issue for uh, Markkinen. Um, he, he's had a lot of games where he's kind of dealt with foul trouble, and he picked up you know two quick fouls last game. But if he stays out of foul trouble, I think he plays 30-plus minutes. I think you get a higher ceiling from Kevin Love, but you know, as a safe option in the mid-range, I don't hate marking it at 5,500. And then the only other guy I'll mention from Cleveland is Rondo. Um, Rondo was someone that I really wasn't interested in last slate, but it is worth noting that he played 26 minutes now. Is this something that is going to continue? I really have no idea. Obviously, there's the narrative like playoff Rondo. Uh, when, when it gets to the playoffs, like Rondo just kind of, he gets more involvement. Maybe that continues. You know, Maybe in this game, they play 25, 26 minutes you know, and they give Rondo 25, 26 minutes again, it's possible. At 3,400, if you told me before the slate started that Rondo was going to play 26 minutes again, I would like him a lot. I'm just not confident that that happens. I think we could see a very condensed rotation. I think you could see heavy, heavy minutes for, um, you know, Mobley, Garland, Karis Avert. I think Kevin Love plays probably close to 30 minutes. I think Markinen plays over 30. Um, Jetty Osmond probably gets like mid-20s. They did, Okoro did ki- uh, get cut down a lot last game. He started but only played 13 minutes, so... Does Okoro play just 13 minutes again? Like, he probably plays more than 13 minutes. And if he's playing more minutes, I would think that probably takes some minutes away from from Rondo. So I'll be interested to see, like, what Rondo's ownership is. If Rondo's going to be really chalky, I'll just fade that. Like, because I just don't think he... I don't think the likelihood of him playing 26 minutes again is enough for me to want to play him as a chalk value. But if nobody's going to play Rondo, he was pretty low on last slate. If nobody plays him, then, yeah, I'm fine taking that risk and hoping he plays 26 minutes again. So... That would kind of depend on ownership for me. I think Rondo has the upside if the minutes are there, um, but if he's going to be really popular just because he played 26 minutes last game, I would be fine fading that and you know just hoping that he doesn't play 26 minutes again, which I don't think is a guarantee. But that's all I got for Cleveland. That's all I got for this first game. So let's move on uh, to the night game, the Pelicans and the Clippers. So looking at the Pelicans, you got CJ McCollum at 8,900, who had a really big game against the Spurs on Wednesday. He played 39 minutes, had 51 DraftKings points. You know, even with Brendan Ingram in the lineup, even playing with Joe Val, you know, CJ McCollum's role has been still been really good. He's been playing huge minutes. I would think here he's going to play close to 40, if not over 40 minutes. I would still rather play like Garland and Trey and PG, who we'll talk about. Um, but I think McCollum's a fine option. He was he was lower owned than some of the other guys on the on Wednesday slate, like Lamelo, Trey, um, PG or not PG, but uh, I forgot who the, Dejounte. Like CJ was a lot lower owned than those guys last slate. Will he be lower owned today since he's coming off a big game? I don't know. His his ownership might go up a little bit. But CJ's a fine play. Um, J. Val definitely stands out as one of the better center options. They gave J. Val really big minutes in that game against the Spurs Wednesday, and I think they're going to give J. Val big minutes here again. Uh, like the matchup a lot against the Clippers. I know he had like his best game of the season came against the Clippers earlier this year. I, I want to see if I can find it in the game log. Um, let's see. I know he's had a lot of success in this matchup this season. So he had 39 DK points in only 32 minutes in one of their matchups. And then they played 
Yeah, they played on the uh, November 29th. He had 32 minutes and 70 DraftKings points, 39 points, 15 rebounds, 3 assists. I know he had like a crazy, like he shot 7 for 8 from 3 that game, which obviously is not sustainable. But worth noting that J-Val has had some success against the Clippers this season. Obviously, Carl Anthony Towns really struggled against them, you know, in the in that playing game. I think J-Val can have success, is, have success here, though. I don't worry about, you know, Zubak on the defensive end. Zubak's never been a great defender. We have seen the you know the the Clippers double team bigs a lot this year, and you know if they do double team J Val, maybe you know maybe he doesn't get as much opportunity. But I think the minutes are going to be really good, and we know J Val can produce when he's out there. Um, you know we'll see what the Clippers do on the defensive end and try and stop him. But at 8K, if J Val plays 36 minutes again, feel very confident that he's you know going to have a pretty good game just because of how productive of a player he is when he's on the floor. So really like J Val on both sides. He's really affordable on Yahoo. I think J Val stands out. It's probably the best center play on Yahoo. Him and Capella are definitely close. I, I like J. Val a lot at $28 on Yahoo. And then, then you have Brendan Ingram at $7,800, who's a fine mid-range play. He was kind of disappointing last slate. He only played 30 minutes and 39, had 39 DK points. Uh, it was reported that he was not going to be on a minutes limit, so it was kind of weird to see him only play 30 minutes. I don't think he was in foul trouble. He had four fouls, but I don't think he got limited by foul trouble. I might be wrong there. Honestly, I can't remember. Um... I would think, you know, with this being a do or die game, like I would think Brandon Ingram is going to play as much as he possibly can, which is probably at least like 35, 36 minutes. Feel better about J Val. I feel better about CJ McCollum, but on a two game slate, obviously Brandon Ingram is playable. And then when you're looking for like value from the Pelicans, you have Herb Jones, who's coming off a solid game. He played uh, 37 minutes, had 30 drafting points. Obviously, Herb Jones is kind of out there for defensive purposes. He's not a super productive point per minute player, he's not a high usage player at all. But he can defend really well, and I think he'll he'll be needed here defensively to try and stop Paul George. So I expect big minutes once again for Herb Jones. Um, he can always get a lot of defensive stats. Like he always has a path to a big game. It's just that at 4800, if his ownership is going to be a little bit inflated because he had had a good game last game, like Herb Jones is one of those guys I'm kind of fine just like fading, just because I think it, at this price tag, there's enough risk for him to not be someone I want to play as a chalk value. Uh, then you have Jackson Hayes, you know, who started but played 20 minutes. I don't think he's going to be someone that, you know, stands out even though he's been starting. Jose Alvarado did play pretty well off the bench in 22 minutes, had 20 DraftKings points. At 4,300, like, I think he's priced where he should be for, you know, what whatever role he's going to have, probably 20, 22 minutes. Um, you know, if Alvarado plays 22 minutes again, he can put up 20 DraftKings points, 22 DraftKings points in that time. But at 4,300, you know, he's not super, super cheap anymore, so... I'm not really looking to anyone else on the Pelicans. I definitely think, you know, Jay Val is my favorite play here. Probably McCollum and then Ingram and then Jones. And I, I think that's about, about it for me from the Pelicans. Now, on the other side with the Clippers, you got Paul George at 10K, who I think is a really good payoff option. I, like I said, I think I would still put Trey Young ahead of him, especially since Trey is a little bit cheaper on DraftKings. But, I mean, PG had a massive game against Minnesota um, in that, you know, play in game. Played 41 minutes, had 57 DraftKings points. Paul George, I mean, his role is just going to be great. He's going to play huge, huge minutes. He played 41 last game. There's a chance he plays even more today. He took 24 shots. He had 34 points to go along with seven rebounds and five assists. Like, Paul George is just going to stuff the stat sheet when he's out there. Um, he had a terrible first half shooting-wise, and then he started to get things going in the second half. You know, when, when he's out there, he's going to be taking a ton of shots. He can rebound. He can get assists. He just does everything. And at 10K, I'm fine paying this price high for Paul George. Obviously, on a two-game slate, you kind of have to make some decisions. You can't pay up for everyone. So if I'm playing like one lineup, I think I pr I'm going to prioritize getting Trey into my lineup. But if I could play Trey and PG together, like that's something I would definitely try and look to do because I think Paul George's upside is super, super high here. Obviously, the matchup against you know Herb might not be ideal. We've seen Herb be able to stop a lot of guys this year. But Paul George's usage is just going to be so good. His role is just going to be massive that um, I think he can have success here. So definitely into Paul George. Reggie Jackson surprisingly played huge, huge minutes last game. And I was... A little hesitant on Reggie Jackson just because his minutes have kind of been all over the place this season. But it was a good it was good to see him play 42 minutes last game. I don't know if that continues today. But his price tag at 6100 does look very appealing if he plays 42 minutes again. Now that's the concern. I don't think it's a guarantee that Reggie Jackson gets those heavy, heavy minutes just because they have Terrence Mann. They have other guys they can give minutes to. We've seen Ty Lue just run with the hot hand. Whoever's playing well, that's who will give the minutes to. And obviously Reggie Jackson was playing pretty well last game, so he played huge minutes. At 6,100, you know, if he does get those big minutes again, I think Jackson offers a lot of upside at that price tag. So I am in, I'm into Reggie Jackson as a mid-range option. I think he does stand out as a solid play. Zubak, uh, his minutes were pretty good last game. He played 32 while fouling out in 32 minutes, so he probably would have played more 
had you know had he not found out um going up against Val, like i would think they probably want zubak out there for you know as much as he can be out there 5400 feels like an appropriate price tag for him um I think on this slate, when I'm when you're looking at the center position, I really want to try and prioritize like J Val or Capella or Mobley. Um, but I think Zubox playable. He's not my favorite guy though. Um, don't love him at, on the slate. I think uh, Norman Powell once again stands out as a solid option. He played 27 minutes off the bench. He had a big first half. He didn't do much in the second half last game, uh, but got 27 minutes. You know his usage off the bench for the Clippers this year has been pretty solid. Worth noting that Paul George is going to play like almost the entire game. You know 40 plus minutes. So. Obviously, Norman Powell, a lot of his minutes are going to be alongside Paul George. But in those few minutes he gets without Paul George, he should be really productive in those minutes. Um, Luke Kennard was out last game, so that will be an injury to watch. Luke Kennard, if he does not play today, like that just makes me feel better about Norman Powell. I think he would play you know, 26 to 30 minutes once again if Kennard sits. If Kennard plays, would he be in the rotation? Would he get minutes? I don't know if it's a guarantee that would happen, but that will be something to monitor. I definitely think Norman Powell, though, is a solid play at 5,300. Marcus Morris, his minutes were pretty good last game. He just didn't do anything. He shot five for eleven, had twelve points, one re or one assist, and that was it. Like he had no peripherals except for one assist. Little little bit of a weird stat line from him, um, but he did play thirty minutes. I would think he plays around thirty minutes again, maybe a few more. You know, Marcus Morris, he's one of these guys that it all depends on how he's playing. If he's shooting the ball well, he could get thirty plus minutes. If he's playing really poorly, they'll turn to Robert Covington. They'll turn to Terrence Mann. They have other guys that can play. I think Morris carries a little bit of risk, but at five K. He's playable, and that's probably all that I'm looking to on the Clippers. You know, Hartenstein, I mean, he's been a good backup this year, but he only played seven minutes last game, which is obviously a concern. Um, at 4600 I mean, the price tag did come down a good amount, and Hartenstein is one of these guys that can be really productive when he gets minutes. I just don't I don't know how much they're really going to play him here, especially with it being a do-or-die game. Like, I don't know how much they want Hartenstein on the floor. Um, so a little bit of a, a risky play, but obviously the upside's there. If he can, you know, get the minutes, I just don't think it's a guarantee. Covington at 4,500 doesn't stand out. Nick Batum, I mean, he started. He played decent minutes, 28 minutes, but he just doesn't offer much upside. So that's probably it from the Clippers. I think we talked about everything here. Um, I think that's it for this two-game slate. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, I appreciate you watching. If you enjoyed, just you know, make sure you hit that like button down below before you do get out of here. Hit that subscribe button as well. Check out Prize Picks Again, use promo code NOAH when you sign up for Prize Picks. They'll match your first deposit up to $100. And as we talked about in the beginning of the video, Prospects is running a cool promo. Uh, they have Joel Embiid's points prop set at 0.5. So obviously you would take the over on Embiid's points prop, find another pick to pair with that, and you're basically getting three to one odds on any single you know play. It doesn't even have to be an NBA play. You could take a look at their board for other sports. Just find something to pair with the Embiid prop. Um, you get three to one odds as long as you as long as you hit your prop, you, you triple up your money. Um, so pretty cool promo Prospects is running. If you're not signed up over there, definitely sign up. Take advantage of this. I think this promo will be up until Saturday, 6 o'clock Eastern time when this uh, Sixers and Raptors game starts. So you have a while till it, till it goes away. Uh, but definitely get over to Prize Picks, sign up, use code NOAH. Take advantage of that promo they're running, and you know hopefully you'll be able to easily triple up your money. Um, but that's all I got for this video, guys. I appreciate you watching. Hope you enjoyed, um, and we'll see you in the next video. Best of luck tonight, guys.